So, before I get started in this video, this is going to be a blog type of video. I made a video yesterday, or recorded a video. It probably had 45 minutes worth of footage. And I was getting ready to make my closing portion of the video, and the SD card crashed on it, in the camera. That's frustrating when that happens, especially when you can't remake the video, because what I was doing was I was... I spent the entire video showing you how to sand and, uh, uh, the lawnmower, the, the paint, primering it, sanding the primer. I went through the whole process. I was explaining to you that I'd semi-quasi worked for my father-in-law years ago. My first father-in-law, he was, he was kind of a rough guy, but regardless, he, I wasn't his favorite person, or son-in-law at least, and he, he showed me a lot on how to to paint cars now that was 30 years ago so I've forgotten most everything but what I could remember I was kind of explaining to you so that footage is lost and I'm very frustrated so you missed out on a, a good portion of ta-da <laughs> I did get it painted and man am I proud of it I taped off the whole thing uh, with the boxes and bags and wrapping paper and tape and then uh, I primered it and then after you primer I did two coats of primer uh, rust oleum primer then I sanded the that was 600 grit sandpaper and it's wet sandpaper so you run the hose while you're you're sanding to keep the uh, sandpaper from clogging up and then this morning I painted it green and boy did it turn out nice I did very little streaking uh, I did a couple spots that are somewhat noticeable if you get up close. There's a spot there that, that ran. I said streak ran. I just got too close or something. And then there's another. This one isn't so bad because it happened. Well, there it is right there. It sure did turn out pretty. Now, here's a previous picture of when we picked it up. This is the day we picked it up over here in the picture and picture thing up here in the corner. And and you see I painted the uh, huh, it turned out in a different color I painted the muffler black that's a high temperature black that I used on my wood stove I don't know what happened to that spot right there looks like maybe it's just a sun no hmm. maybe I'll grab the paint can here and try it again there's not much in it yeah that worked guess I just missed it so that's the high temperature stuff I use for the stove, the wood stove. And then we have a high temperature gloss, I guess Carolyn wanted me to put on top of that. So we'll finish that up. So this lawnmower has been a fun project. I, I'm not going to be able to get very much money out of it. The Craftsman I've been selling, I'll probably get $50 more out of those than I did with the, I will with this one. I painted the hood with the same uh, JD Green metal. I know somebody's gonna say no you're supposed to use plastic. I couldn't find anything that had JD Green with plastic. But it did okay. I did this last night so it's good and dry. Yet I didn't sand this down. I, I didn't know if I should have. It seemed to do okay. A little bit of bumpiness there, but pretty much everywhere else it turned out pretty nice. Uh, so then I went over to the mower deck, and I didn't do anything to this one except paint it. I pressure washed it, got as many of the paint chips up as I could with the pressure washer, and just painted it. I didn't feel like I really wanted to tear this thing apart, sand it all down. It would have been a nightmare. And since it's underneath the deck, I really didn't need to go through it very much. Uh, because it's just not visible now you'll notice that that weld that I put together it didn't do bad so you'll see here in the picture in picture you can see the weld I'm putting on it I really am proud of that weld and then uh, of course we got the bearing replaced on the uh, the spindle so the, that fix that real quick somebody asked me if I have tested this I've not actually cut grass with it because the spindle was bad 
but I did turn it on while it was sitting up here on the concrete pad. It turned on. This lawnmower has an electric PTO, so you flip a switch and it turns on the mower. It doesn't have that manual lift thing. That switch is right here. I do want to test something on this before I set it out. I want to make sure the battery charges. Somebody brought up a good point yesterday. I did this, the di voltage regulator was disconnected on this. They ripped the wires completely out. So that, since it's a 15 amp uh, alternator on it, it can overcharge the battery. The reason this has a 15 amp and everything else has six is because of that PTO. It's electric, so you gotta have more electric to run it. But if the alternator charges the battery, if the battery dies, you may not be able to mow anymore. So I'm gonna disconnect, I'm gonna start it, disconnect the battery, put my voltage meter up to it, just make sure it's producing electric. I understand it can overcharge the battery and it'll wear out your battery faster, but as long as you're running the PTO, it won't overcharge the battery. It's when you're not running the PTO that you're at risk. The This uh, had, didn't have a lot of problems on it. All the wiring had been ripped off. And so here you'll see what I initially did. I, well, I spent about, I don't know, four or five hours trying to figure out how I could rewire the thing, but it was just, it was a nightmare. So I put in a push button switch, you'll see here, we're putting that in, and now it'll start. The, there is a key to it that shuts off the carburetor solenoid. Then uh, the only other thing I think, oh, then we had to replace that spindle on the uh, mower deck. That was $20, so we we're, the, the switch was basically free because I did that for a customer a while back. And when I bought the switch, it sent me two switches. Then, uh, so then I spent $20 on the spindle. And that was an all-day project. That was pretty tough to get off. Now, of course, I gotta put a new sh sh shroud here, a chute. I got one on a mower over there that I'm gonna trade out. And then I had to change out the carburetor. Uh, th that carburetor leaked by pretty badly, the old one. It would run. He actually started it for me. But first of all, he said it ran really rich, so he, he ran it on, I don't know, I can't remember, but he, it was really putting out a lot of gas. So, the reason was, is because the air filter was completely clogged. So I changed out the carburetor. While I was doing that, I went ahead and changed, uh, took the shroud off because there was a mouse nest in there. It was pretty serious. I had to get that mouse nest out. Uh, one other thing, which I'm not going to show you, is the wheels were misaligned, the front wheels. So I had to bend one this wheel back forward. you got to be careful running into things. You will bend the shaft that holds your tire on. Uh, it happens quite frequently, actually. I've done This is the second one I've done this year. The... Uh, but it runs great. Now, it runs like an old... Farm all. I used to, when I was baling hay back in the 90s, my grandfather had a, a farm all. And yeah, you're lucky if it would stop. The gears were hard to shift into. The uh, steering was really clunky and loose. It's the way this is. This is a 1989 John Deere. Uh, it was top of the line back in 98 or back in the 89 90 91 92 93 This was the original series Because it had the yellow deck and Then they brought it back I think in 96 these dates are estimates And they brought it back with a black deck and that that did not have the PTO The reason this one had a PTO because it also came with a snowblower so you take the deck off, put the blower on, you hook it up, and then you could turn the blower on with that switch. I figured for 89, that was pretty high-tech stuff. Because still yet today, PTO lawnmowers are pretty expensive. It's not something every lawnmower has. A lot of the zero turns have them. And some of your bigger, I don't know, 56-inch, 52-inch 
uh, light, light mowers have them, but the smaller ones I've not seen them on. This one's a 36 inch and it's got that PTO and it works. That's what's so cool is it works with all the wiring that have been ripped out of here. It, it worked. So I I really love this thing and now that I painted it I really love this thing it's it just that old lawnmower feeling back in I guess 79 80 time frame my dad worked for a uh, lawnmower mechanic just briefly maybe a year or so prior to that I guess I'll give you a little history prior to that mom and dad owned a bakery and this lawnmower mechanic would come into the bakery every morning. I, I would hang out with him. He took me over to his other property, and he would eat donuts, and he'd take us over to the, take me over to the other property and show the lake and all kinds of stuff. Great guy. A lot of fond memories of him. So, you know, I, I would hang out in that garage. Dad worked in the garage. Well, Dad bought a, a wheel horse from him. Wheel horses were amazing. My mother's father used to have one so it smoked it terribly bad when he bought it so one night dad and i went down to the shop and stayed all night changing out the cylinders and the rings and i, I don't know all what he did to it and he gave that to me well shortly thereafter mom and dad got a divorce and i took it with me and my grandpa mom's dad bought it from me and he held on to it and fixed it up and put the snow blade on it and the plow and chains and filled the tires up with the liquid so it would be heavier. It was a nice mower. But it was that old timey thing. I mean the belts were, you know, inches away from your feet and <laughs> probably very unsafe. And as small as I was, you know, boy, I mean it would have just chewed me up if I'd have fallen off into one of those things. I really miss having it. But this has brought back a lot of memories of that. It's uh, I really did enjoy riding this around. Now, admittedly, it's a 12.5 horsepower lawnmower. It's, it's not very big. And you can tell. I mean, when you put it in gear, the mower slows down. And it's got a Kohler engine. And I would say the engine isn't running fast enough. But I'm not too excited about turning up the RPMs. And the reason is, is it's already pretty old. So why do I want to stress it by adding more RPMs and just wear it out faster? If someone were to buy this, I, I would say that they probably wouldn't want to mow with it too much. Well, maybe tow a garden cart around, put your tools in the garden cart, something like that. That would probably be better for this thing, just let it run out on its years. But I'm sure somebody next year will pick it up because they need a mower it'll last the season and they'll throw it away but it was sure fun working on it i've always wanted to do something like this just kind of restore kind of restore a lot more now had i restored it for myself i would have spent a lot more money on it and done it absolutely correct i would have done everything correctly i would have rewired it i would have put in the uh voltage regulator I would have I would not have bent the the rod back I would have replaced the whole front end assembly um, just whatever I find parts on a lot of parts on eBay not so many aftermarket parts anymore definitely no original parts the 12.5 really holds this thing back if you can put a bigger engine on it it would do absolutely amazing but I I really like it it is just absolutely amazing to get on this thing and it was a lot of fun so I don't know if I'll do this very often you know restore a lawn more just to sell it I mean I'm not gonna hardly get anything out of it but there wasn't a lot of that need to be done to it other than the paint so it was a lot of labor but it was a labor of love and, and not a lot of parts so I'll still make quite a bit of money off this even with the paint I mean the paint was maybe 25 bucks for the primer and the paint so everything else we had laying around the carburetor that was 20 bucks and, and the, uh, the spindle was 20 bucks I sure did uh, enjoy this project and I would encourage folks to do things like this when they're living their dreams just do something you've always wanted to do I've always wanted to do something like this but why would I ever do it 
if it wasn't just to resell it, why would I ever do it? It, it wouldn't, I mean, you're just wasting money. But if you resell it, I don't know. Tim Taylor, he worked the, the entire, on that Tool Time show, the entire series, he worked on that car. And I think it was the last episode, they sold it. So, I guess that's what I'll do. <laughs> so, if you click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was working on this. So, I hope I can inspire you to do something you're passionate about so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.